Everyone is arguing about whether to use Rust or C++. Hey Leo, I was uh, wondering what your opinions on Rust versus C++ are. Rust is generally a lot more like developer friendly and easy to work with, like, you know. C++ was created in the ancient times. In fact, Jesus himself used C++, which is probably the reason he was crucified. C++ is an incredibly flexible and object-oriented language. It's a superset of the C language, providing extra functionality such as vectors and strings, as well as easier memory management. Rust was released in 2015 and added a completely new set of features to the table. It also provides some object-oriented functionality, however Rust does not support an inheritance but uses a trait system instead to provide abstraction, which is unique to the language. Rust was the first language without a garbage collector to introduce memory safety, and its ownership system makes it a lot harder to cause memory bugs and undefined behaviour when compared to most languages. Which brings us on to our next section, memory management. C++ allows for fine-grained control over memory when it is necessary. However, manually managing every bit of memory can lead to a lot of memory safety issues. Modern C++ has done a great job of mitigating these safety issues by providing features such as smart pointers and move semantics. These provide great alternatives to manual memory management and should be used where possible to avoid undefined behaviour and memory leaks. With this said, there are many scenarios in C++ where you have to use raw pointers, or at least should use them, especially in complex data structures. Now, obviously, an experienced programmer is going to write these bugs much less often, and it's something that you get better at. However, the language is still prone to bugs like these, and they can often be hard to catch. Now, Rust is where things get really strange. Rust operates on a completely different paradigm. The ownership system ensures that there can only be one variable owner at a time, and when the variable's owner goes out of scope, such as at the end of a function or code block, it is dropped from memory. And this is not to be confused with garbage collection, which occurs periodically instead of systematically. This system is incredibly effective at preventing memory leaks, while still maintaining high performance. However, it's worth noting that it's still possible to write memory leaks in Rust, even with code that Rust considers quote-unquote safe. A big flaw of this system is that it can be very frustrating to work with at times, which brings us on to difficulty. Rust's ownership system encourages a completely different programming style, and it isn't uncommon for beginners to write large chunks of code just to realise the entire structure of the code needs rewriting, as it doesn't satisfy the borrow checker. When learning Rust, you'll have to take whatever you've learned about structure and code and throw it out the window. An example of this is in my first big Rust project, which was an economy simulator. I found myself battling with the compiler way too often, because I wanted to code in my own way, and it led to an absolute shitstorm of a code base being created. This can also lead to developers using unsafe in places where it's not necessary. Another mistake a lot of Rust beginners make is overusing .clone to evade the borrow checker, which can result in a higher resource consumption in the CPU and memory. With all this said, Rust can make the development process incredibly enjoyable once you adjust to its differences. It provides an excellent safety system to catch your mistakes before you even run your code. Everything that can go wrong in your code is always shown in plain sight for the developer to handle. This is achieved through the result and option types, which provide multiple ways for you to handle the issue, in case something goes wrong. Rust compiler errors are also typically clearer than the errors generated by popular C++ compilers such as GCC or Clang. With 95 keywords, C++ has an incredibly steep learning curve. With so many features, it leads to developers picking and choosing which features they like, and this can result in an inconsistent code base if not properly regulated. And the thing is, the features in C++ aren't actually that complicated. There are just so many of them that it can be incredibly overwhelming for beginners. However, with time and effort, C++ can be an incredible language to add to your toolset. Despite having less memory safety, C++ is fully capable of writing highly secure and robust software and its higher degree of flexibility can win over a lot of developers when compared to Rust. And when I say flexibility, both languages are equally as capable, however C++ is a lot less restrictive in the way that you write your code. In terms of performance, C++ is objectively faster in every single way. No, I I'm just trying to wind you up. I'm not even going to get into that because it really fucking depends on what you're writing, as well as the skill of the programmer. While both languages operate very differently, they have very similar performance capabilities. C++ has a much larger community than Rust. However, Rust has the loudest community. Can we be real here? Thanks, Primogen. Some might argue that the C++ ecosystem is rather disorganized. This is primarily due to its bare-bones nature and multiple compilers. The process of installing libraries in C++ can be more complicated than Rust, as you have to do more work to link packages correctly. A lot of people enjoy this approach, however, as it keeps the language bare-bones and fully within the programmer's control. C++ is also known for having great backwards compatibility due to its maturity. 
Rust, on the other hand, has its own package manager and many packages available. The downside of this is that with a package manager, you can end up unknowingly installing many sub-dependencies, which arguably gives the programmer less control over the codebase. What's great about Rust is that the documentation is automatically generated. Rust automatically uses the source code and comments to create a reference on their docs.rs website, which means every single package has documentation. As well as this, Rust has good interoperability with C libraries and makes it relatively easy to create bindings for them. As of now, however, Rust struggles to bind to C++ libraries, and there is still some work to be done. Rust has also created their own free book for beginners to learn the language with, but both languages have some great learning resources. In terms of use cases, both languages are similar. C++ has a wide range of uses and is commonly used for games development, embedded systems, desktop software, and much more. C++ has proven its capabilities in large-scale code bases, including Windows, Chromium, Godot, and MySQL. Due to C++ being a superset of C, it can also be used alongside C code bases. While Rust is capable in these areas, it is commonly used for networking, developer tooling, command line tools, and more. It's worth noting that while Rust is a very capable language, there are a few areas in the ecosystem that aren't quite there yet. For example, there are libraries available such as Bevy and Amethyst for game development. However, these just aren't as capable as engines such as Unreal. With this said, Rust is still a very robust language and it was a big win for Discord which they used to handle a huge amount of traffic on their platform. So, to conclude, use Neva because they're both a shitting mindfuck. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. If you're looking for a robust and performant language with excellent memory and type safety and a rapidly growing community, Rust is a great option. However, if you prefer a high degree of flexibility in your code and control over memory with an object-oriented approach and countless features, C++ is the way to go. If you'd like my personal opinion, I think that Rust is the best choice for general purpose programming, whereas C++ is a lot better suited for large-scale, lower-level applications with close control over hardware. But I know a lot of you are going to disagree with that, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope you're all satisfied with the rework of the old video, as I cut out a lot of the jokes and reworded my points to make the video less biased towards a particular language, except for the very end, of course. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.